day one of our breathing challenge. So um, really gonna look, take a closer look at the breath. And this week is all about the diagram. I did a short workshop at the weekend, which gives us a lot more, give you a lot more information and um, awareness of the diaphragm, where it is in the body, how it moves in the body, and how we can um, use our imagery and visualizations to help improve the way that we breathe. So today I'm just going to sort of reinforce some of those things, and then we're going to get on with some breathing exercises. The best place for you to be is either stood up, sat down in a chair, or sat down on the floor, maybe with a bolster or cushion or something to keep you um, in good alignment. So we just want to be sitting up nice and tall. Oops. Okay, so once you establish a position that you feel comfortable in, I just want to share my screen with you just briefly so that we can actually see where the diaphragm is in the body. So if we take a look here, you'll be able to see this image, hopefully. And the image is basically the diaphragm. The diaphragm sits inside the chest cavity. And the diaphragm is our main breathing muscle, which is obviously a good place to start when we're looking at trying to improve our breathing. So the diaphragm, if you look at the shape of it, you can see that it's um, more like a dome shape. So to me, that could be um, you know, a similar shape to say a parachute, when, it, when you're coming down and that parachute is like a dome. Um, you might look at it as one of those umbrellas, yeah, those, those big round umbrellas. The diaphragm is a dome shape and sits inside the chest. It moves up and down to draw the breath into the lungs and to push the breath out. So if you can see on that image, you can see that the diaphragm attaches to the sternum. The sternum is this large bone at the front of your rib cage, and you can feel that, so you can touch that. Right at the very bottom, that more pointy part is the cycle process. So the diaphragm, if you go from the pointy part up a couple of centimeters, that's where the diaphragm is in the body. So it's quite high, and then it comes down, and you can actually feel, if you look on the image, it attaches to the bottom ribs, the first, the bottom three ribs and the floating ribs. It goes round to the back of the body as it's still attaching on the inside of your rib cage to those ribs. So you can touch where the diaphragm attaches to. So another image I think that it looks similar to, and if you don't like jellyfish, then obviously not an image that you might want to use. But if you think of the jellyfish and how a jellyfish is kind of, when it, it's swimming, it comes up and then flattens out. And that's very similar to how the diaphragm actually moves. So it can be domed up into the chest. And when we breathe, when we breathe, the, the diaphragm needs to flatten and then it domes and then it flattens. So what I want you to try and notice is if you can identify when you think your diaphragm is lifting and when you think it's flattening. Is it lifting on your out breath or is it lifting on your in breath? So just sit in stillness for a moment and focus on your breathing. And see if you can feel, you can touch, see if you can feel what's happening. Is the diaphragm lifting or lowering on your in breath? Is it lifting or lowering on the outlet? So just have a moment to check to see if you can identify that. 
So what's actually happening is the dome flattens as we inhale. So as we breathe in, the diaphragm contracts, it flattens and the air gets drawn into the lungs. When we exhale, the diaphragm lifts, comes into its dome, pushes up on the lungs to push the air out of the lungs. Okay, so you may be feeling a lift when you inhale, and this is quite common to, to feel, and you're not wrong with that. When you inhale, your rib cage lifts to create more volume in the chest for your lungs, but your diaphragm is actually lowering. So your rib cage is lifting, your diaphragm lowers, on your inhalation. So see if you can embody that. So I'd have one hand on the chest and the other hand just mirroring the shape of the dome. So when you inhale, you'll feel your ribs, your sternum lift forwards and your diaphragm lowers down. On the out breath, the ribs or the sternum and the ribs soften and the diaphragm domes up into the chest. If thinking of the two is complicating it, just first of all, we feel the rib cage as you inhale. It lifts. And as you exhale, it softens. As you inhale, it lifts. And as you exhale, it softens. So if you think, well, I'm going to take away that image now and just show you. So now I want you to just imagine that this is the diaphragm. So it's not particularly domed, but you get the idea. So this is my diaphragm. And this is one of my lungs. So we're gonna take this, this is my left lung. So when I want to breathe in, the air gets drawn into the lung. I need more volume. And I, so therefore my diaphragm is drawing down, vacuuming and then pushing up. My diaphragm lowers and flattens, diaphragm lifts and domes. So we breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. So we could also imagine this is the whole of the chest. So imagine this is the chest cavity. As I inhale, the whole of the ribs expand. And notice it's very three-dimensional as I exhale. Lifts, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, and breathing out. So we know that the diaphragm sits just above the xiphoid process. It's a dome shape. When we inhale, it flattens, and when we inhale, it lifts. So we can have our hands in a dome shape when we mirror in the movement of the rib, of the diaphragm. Make sure we've got the ribs sitting above the pelvis. Stay relaxed in the shoulders, and take a breath in. And breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. So you could have that image of the jellyfish. As we inhale, the jellyfish flattens. As we exhale, the jellyfish lifts. And another one that's quite nice to think about is at the top, when your diaphragm, where your diaphragm sits, what sits above them? We've already mentioned the lungs, but there's another vital organ that sits just on top of the diaphragm. And what would that be? sits just on top, it actually is kind of attached fascially to the um, diaphragm. 
and that's your heart. So the heart goes for a ride every time we take a breath in and we allow the diaphragm to lift and lower. So when we inhale, the heart comes down a little. And when we exhale, the heart lifts. We inhale and the heart lowers. We exhale and the heart lifts. Good. So it's really quite difficult when we're thinking about the muscles within our body, but the diaphragm is a muscle. It needs to be trained very similar to the way that we train other skeletal muscles. So the, the muscles in our thighs, the muscles in our arms. The muscle needs to lengthen and shorten for it to work at its optimum and to get it to be stronger. So if we um, want to think about the diaphragm inside the body, just take a moment to close your eyes. And now we know where the diaphragm is, we know the shape of the diaphragm. First of all, I want you to try to imagine a room in your home. So let's choose your lounge. And I want you to identify the objects in that lounge. So you will identify your, maybe your sofa, coffee table, um, television, you know, ornaments, whatever it is. I want you to try to visualize those in that room as a three-dimensional object. So you can see them, you can see around them. And now bring that three-dimensional awareness into your body. So you can imagine your rib cage, and now you're kind of inside the rib cage. You can see the diaphragm, the dome shape that's attaching to the sternum. It's attaching to the ribs around the back of your body. This lovely dome shape, that parachute shaped muscle. You can imagine the heart sitting on the top of the diaphragm and either side the two lungs. When you breathe in, the diaphragm will lower. When you breathe out, it turns up. Just taking those breaths into the body, visualizing the movement of the diaphragm, lowering on your in-breath, lifting on your out-breath. Lowering on your in-breath, lifting on your out-breath. Taking any of those images, play around with those images. Maybe you'll come up with an image that works better for you. I like, I'll share with you one of the images that I works personally for me, is that when I'm exhaling, it's like a helium balloon is coming up and underneath my diaphragm and lifting it up into that dome. It's floating up into the diaphragm, breathing out. And when I inhale, it's like a soft cushion just coming down onto the top of my diaphragm and gently flattening it out. I exhale and the balloon lifts my diaphragm up into the chest. The air comes out. And when I inhale, a little cushion just flat, pushing the diaphragm down. My ribs expand. And when I exhale, my ribs drop back down, my sternum comes back down as my diaphragm lifts up. If it's too much to think of the ribs and the diaphragm, that's fine, just work with one, just the diaphragm lifting and lowering. Good. 
So another way we can improve our breathing is to improve the proprioception of that area. We're going to use tapping and movement to help that happen. So we're going to take fists. So if you've got Franklin balls or airfield balls, you can use those. But I'm just going to tap my rib cage on my left side. And as I do that, I'm going to think about breathing. Well, I am going to breathe and I'm going to breathe deep breaths. Tap in the sternum, all on that left side, where the rib cage, where the diaphragm connects to the rib cage. So you can go around the back, down the back ribs, around the side. Make sure you're still breathing deep breaths. And then just pause. And notice the difference between the side that we've tapped and the side that we haven't yet. Breathe and do you notice any difference in the sides? I'm definitely feeling more root space available here, accessing more space in the rib cage. Freeing up the rib cage. To improve the breath. Let's do the other side, same thing. So you breathe into the body, tapping the ribs, breathing, deep breaths, moving, feel the ribs expand as you inhale. Sternum. And then pause. Notice how that leaves you feeling. And breathe. I'm going to guide you through just a short breathing practice now. And I'd like you to bring your full attention into your diaphragm. You can use any of the imageries that I've mentioned. I'm just going to leave that to you to choose. So just to recap, the diaphragm domes up as we exhale and flattens as we inhale. It's a dome shape and it lifts and lowers. As the dome lowers, our ribs lift. As the dome lifts, our ribs lower. Yeah, so you can try and embody that and feel that as you're breathing. You might like the, the imagery of the heart on a little elevator coming up and down. Or again, the one that I particularly like was the balloon, the helium balloon coming up and lifting my diaphragm up on my exhalation. And then that soft cushion just bringing it down on my inhalation. So get yourself comfortable. Find stillness in your um, body, so good alignment. You can be standing. And just take a breath in for four, three, two, one, and pause. Four, three, two, one. Exhale. Four, three, two, one, and hold. Four, three, two, one. Inhale. Four, three, Two, one, and pause. Four, three, two, one. Exhale and push. Two, three, four, and hold. Four, three, two, one. Inhale. Four, three, two, one, and pause. Exhale. Pause. Inhale. Pause. X. 
exhale. And pause. Breathing in. Pause. Breathe out. And pause. Inhale. And pause. Exhale. And pause. Then just breathe your natural breath. Bringing your attention inwards, visualizing your diaphragm. Lifting as the we breathe out and the ribs softening down. And as we inhale, the ribs expand and the diaphragm lows. So I hope that's making sense to you and it will make more sense in the body the more you practice. So this is day one, week one. So we are going to practice the diaphragm all week. We've got other things to add into it. But for tomorrow, we're going to repeat the same session. So this video will be available um, on YouTube. I'd like you to practice one more time that imagery maybe try some different imagery, maybe coming up with some imagery that works for you. And if that's the case, I'd really love to hear what imagery works for you, because if it works for you, the chances are it's going to be working for somebody else. And it's always helpful to have these um, suggestions that can help improve our function. So um, it's not just about learning how to breathe and doing breathing practice. This is something we can take into our day-to-day -day lives so any times that we're noticing when we stop and notice ourselves and we're breathing really high up here maybe the diaphragm is in its tonic phase so it's just very little kind of movement um, and sometimes we're there a lot of the time in this fight flight mode we want to just ask for those breathing so draw on your imagery and get that diaphragm fully contracting and stretching. Feel the effects it has not only on your um, body and its alignment, but also on how you feel. I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Thank you for being here, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Bye for now.